Hello everyone, hope everyone has been well. It's been a little bit since I've posted a video, but today I'm working on a six drawer mid-century style dresser made by Virginia House. It's in uh, a little bit of a rough shape, but it's not too bad and I think that we can do something really nice with it. So let's jump straight into this one and get our hands dirty. As always, the first step is to remove any drawers and inspect the entire dresser for any kind of damage and to see what potential issues I may run into. I like to dust it all out with a leaf blower just to get rid of all the big stuff and then I go over it with TSP degreaser and I clean the entire piece just so that when I go to sand, I don't mess up all of my sanding pads and I, you don't dig any dirt into the wood grain. I'm using 150 grit sandpaper and I get a lot of questions about the sander that I'm using and this is Festool's ETS EC125. It's a brushless style and it really cuts down on the vibration from your normal big box store um, orbital sanders such as the Ryobi one that I had before this one. Um, it definitely does have a high price tag on it but I figured I may as well just buy the one that I want now and it will last me for years. I do have it paired up with a CTS MIDI um, Festool dust extractor, which is amazing. It really does cut down on a lot of the dust. I do still recommend wearing a mask. Um, I'm taking this down to bare wood because the top I plan on staining it in a dark walnut color. You guys already know me, I love my dark walnut stains. This piece, given its age, it is from the 60s, I'm pretty certain about that. The veneer has softened up a lot over time, and I know I'm going to get a lot of flack for this, but I am going to be doing a two-tone paint and stain combination on this piece. Um, one thing that I did notice when sanding some of the drawer fronts down, and even little portions of the top, that the veneer was really thin, especially at the edges, so any edge work that I may have blown through. I did a little touch up with a, with a pen and then for the drawers after sanding them I just realized that there was a deep groove from a screw that was sticking out of the track so I did have to bondo that so I figured I would just paint most of the drawers and you'll see that coming up later on in the video. So I had an idea for this dresser. I didn't really like the way that the bottom or the base of the dresser sat and had these two little weird uh, I guess you would call them feet, that's what they rested on, and then the rest was a flat base, so I am using my skill saw to cut right at the edge of that thick veneered piece, so that way I can add some legs later. And I am mixing up some Bondo, I get some questions with this stuff too, it is a two part wood filler, where the red the cream, or whatever you want to call it, is the activator, so without it, it will never stiffen up and harden so that you can sand it down. So just be careful on how much of the activator you do mix in because the more you put, the faster it will dry and you won't get a lot of work time out of it. So I am reaching for my hammer just to convince these couple of wood pieces to come off. They were not suitable for attaching the legs so I'm going to remove these and I'm going to cut a couple of pieces of wood so that way I can put pocket holes in them and give the legs something to screw down to. So I am using, uh, I ripped this down to like I believe like an inch and a half or two inches, I'm not sure. It's red oak, uh, just some scrap wood I had laying around. I cut it down to length and I add some pocket holes to it. So after trimming those down, I don't have the footage but you can see in this shot right here that I did attach those pieces of red oak with pocket screws. I'm just using 150 grit sandpaper again just to knock down all that bondo and I'm sanding down the top drawers all the way down to bare wood so that I can stain them with Varathane's dark walnut. It's my favorite stain and the dry, the dry time of one hour is definitely a game changer compared to the standard water-based one. I was trying to keep most of this piece um, with a wood tone, but unfortunately some of the veneer was really thin, so I'm trying to keep as much as I can by saving a lot of the edge pieces and a lot of the edge veneer and just staining those. That way at least it gives it a more of a wood look from the front, which you'll see later on. So 
So this Verithane stain does a really good job at coating this stuff and I only had to put one coat. I let it dry for a couple of hours and then later on in the video you'll see I did mask off the parts that I stained so that way I can apply my paint. And I couldn't recommend this stuff anymore. I really haven't used a lot of other stains. I know some people have um, recommended general finishes but that stuff is like double the price. I mean I still would like to try it just to see if it makes a big difference to me but I really like this stuff. When covering up stuff that you had stained without finishing it, you really want to give it enough time to dry because if you try to apply tape and paper, obviously that stain will then soak in to the paper and the tape and I've had issues where I remove it and the color is off and then I have to go and restain it and then let it dry and it takes up a lot of time because then I can't apply my top coat so then it adds you know a couple more hours and maybe an extra day to my work. I'm taping off and masking all the edges that I stained and I'm using a razor blade just to score all the edges and trim off the excess so that I keep the stain part covered and everything else that I want to paint I get a nice crispy line. I'm masking off all the drawers using paper and tape. I'm sure that there's a faster way to do this but this is just what works for me. For the paint color I wanted a navy blue with a little bit of gray mixed into it. So I have this blue by Bear, it's called Express Blue, and obviously my favorite color, Limousine Leather Black. So I mixed those up, and I mixed it with water just to thin it out, and then I have this dark gray color, and I never checked to see what it's called, but I mixed in some of that so that I can get a nice dark navy blue. So it is a custom mix, and luckily I mixed enough to cover the entire piece without having to mix more. I get a lot of questions asking me why I don't use um, primer and I do use primer. I have primer and I've used it in the past. It's just that when I'm using darker colors, sometimes primer isn't always needed, especially because this stuff has built-in primer and I've had comments that say, you know, built-in primer isn't the same as using primer, but I like to do three to four coats, which to me, I feel like maybe my first coat is typically that primer coat and it allows me to see any imperfections that I may have missed when I'm applying my wood filler. So that's just kind of my take on it. I get a lot of questions about the gun that I use and my entire setup. Um, I don't know the name brand. I do have it listed in the description below with everything else that I use for my projects, but it is an amazing gun. I got it from Amazon. It cost me about $50 plus tax and shipping. And this has literally been the only gun that I've been using ever since I started flipping furniture. And it's been close to a year and a half now, and it's still going strong. The only thing you have to do is just be sure that you clean it really well after every use. Um, I do have it set up with a 10 gallon California Air Tools ultra quiet compressor which I would like to add an extension tank to that because it does kind of run out of air quite quickly and it tends to run a lot. So just keep that in mind when you're getting your setup. Big compressor. After removing the tape from the small um, veneer strips that I taped off, I'm super happy with the way that it looks against that navy blue. Um, I think it was a good choice just to give it that illusion from the front that it has a lot more wood tone to it than it actually does. Once I'm done removing all the masking tape and paper, I move on to Verithane's water-based polyurethane. I typically like to mix this stuff with my paint just to give it a little bit more depth and protect it from having issues, but because this is a dual combo I decided to just go with uh, completely clear across the whole thing so that I can just top coat everything all at once I do three coats of this with 400 grit sanding in between each coat and for the paint I don't think I covered that during the painting section but I do go over that with 220 and then maybe 400 grit toward the last coat just to give each coat something um, really strong to bond to now that the project's getting toward the end, now all that is left is to attach all the legs. I'm not exactly sure what they're called. I bought them from Amazon. They were under $40. Um, gold, I think gold really contrasts well with blue. And the only other thing that's left is to carefully place all the drawers inside so that we can get a good look at this. 
And I do use Howard's Feed and Wax to wax all the drawers, but I didn't show that. So let's go ahead and take a look at how this thing came out. I'm super excited with the way that this piece turned out. I mean, I guess I could be a little biased because I was the one who um, flipped this one, but all in all, gorgeous piece. Let's go over the numbers like I usually do. I paid $50 for this piece. I spent about $30 in material as most of it's in my free stock already. $40 for the legs, bringing me up to a total of $130. It sold for $700, bringing me a profit of $570 over the course of eight hours bringing me up to $71 an hour. I'd really like to thank everybody for stopping by and watching my videos. I really appreciate all the support that I've been getting, and I will see you on the next project.